There are very few people who have ever reached your level of fame. And, I, and I'm talking biblical status. That's like Moses, Mike Tyson, uh, Listen, Michael Jordan. <laughs> you know what I mean? That level, it's like, man, dude, you, you go to remote parts of Africa, they're like, Mike Tyson. <laughs> Mike Tyson. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They, awesome. they look at me like, uh, yeah. white chicks. I remember, man, we used to sit and watch Eddie Murphy, Eddie Murphy Raw. He would be saying, you know, the F word, and yeah. you know what I mean? And man, we'd be laughing, and then you look back, and now you go, oh, man. You know how many people that hurt? You know how many people, you know, there was stuff, man, you look at all these 80s comedies, and, man, you cringe, man, because everybody, anybody black, anybody female, you a joke. You're not even a real human. A lot of stuff I laughed at when I was young. I go, oh man. I yeah, so believe. many movies. Oh. You're like, they wouldn't even be able to make that <laughs> you now. Couldn't so make tell it. me what happened. You know? with, what's the girl name? Is it um the Mexican girl? Tell me. Oh, with Gina Rodriguez. Yeah, what's the deal with that? What oh, well, 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 some she, Gina had made some comments that that black women have felt were anti-black. You know, and she she literally was like, well, yeah, but you know, what about Hispanics? And when black people, women were saying things, she would jump in and be like, but, but what about, you know, the Latino community? And everybody, and black women were like, wait a minute, just let us get our word out. And people, and then she said she had a dark dad and her father wasn't dark. And he was really like, you know, regular. And, and they felt like she was pandering. And I know Gina. I know Gina. I work with her. And I felt like, Wow, you know, I know this girl. We talk about this stuff. She's cool. But I backed her up, and then the black women were like, hell no, don't you do that. And I said, you know, and I realized there I was as a man trying to hold a woman accountable. That wasn't my place. I had to back up. I had to back up. Went, listen, black women didn't like it. Who am I to say? You know what I mean? I was like, listen, I ain't a black woman. So I had to step back. So what you know? do you think? Um Tell me this. This is interesting. We're talking about black women. Do you think the black women think that all black men, or you particularly, should be their um, shining knight, uh, protecting him? I what do. They think. What, First know? of all, black women are the ones that back me up. Yeah, they're the only ones that back me. Up. <laughs> when I when I told my story, man, Negroes was like, man, get the fuck out of here. You. Look how big you are, man. You should just bad. You should smack his ass. Boom, 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 boom. They say you must be gay. You must have wanted it. This is what D.L. Ugly said. D.L. Ugly was like, well, "Look, man, God gave you muscles so you can say no." And I was like, "Wait," but black women was like, "Nah, nigga, no," because I know these. Because you know the rapists in your neighborhood. You know the molester in your neighborhood. Look, I remember being in school and I was thirteen. And it was grown ass men at the school. And they was like, I said, they was only thir- my classmates. And I said, hey man, ain't you 35? And they were like, hey, hey man, hey, what's up with that little girl, man? I just know if you're, you're like, a big, huh? if you're a big black motherfucker and you start putting your hands on these motherfucking white people in Hollywood, they're gonna get it's gonna get tricky. Oh, okay. More than tricky. It's gonna get really tricky. <laughs> it's gonna get really, really tricky. But man. what I, but black women, however, but see, this is the thing too. I, and I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna keep saying it. Hey man, I I could talk about I could talk about my community because I'm a black man. Go for and it. And I'm gonna talk about what I seen. But we good at rapping. We're excellent rappers. Oh, we can rap at somebody under the table. But action is a different deal. And what black women have been demanding from black men forever is action. Hey man, I remember waiting on my great grand on my uh, grandfather waiting on him. He said he gonna pick me up. He never show up. You understand know what I mean? You do that a few times to a black woman, they're like, hey, you know, some these niggas that, ain't doing nothing. Go ahead, Evan. What do you think about uh, the Kaepernick deal? Oh, oh, first of all, now, let's go back to the NFL. The NFL wanted me, they, they actually, the commissioner invited me to be a part of some domestic violence council sexual assault thing, and I wouldn't go because I knew they wanted it to be a, a press conference. And I said, so y'all want to use me as, oh, wow, look, Terry, Terry Cruz is here. ex NFLer. We're doing something about it. And I was like, but y'all still. I said, every day Kaepernick does not play delegitimizes the league. You can't tell me he's not in the top 30 quarterbacks in the world. Like, what a joke. It's How are you ignoring this? How can you even feel? And listen, you know what it's like? We, hey, look, the Academy Awards are coming up. It's like having the best movie out there, or, or at least, let's say, one of the top. And we totally ignoring it. And everybody just says, oh, no, black, there ain't no Black Panther. What Black Panther right. movie? 
I've never heard of Black Panther. You understand what I'm saying? Tell and me, that kind of stuff. How does it feel when you, when you had all those awards and stuff, those Oscar awards? Oh, dude, yeah, yeah. Listen, <laughs> I used to be... Listen, 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 listen to this shit, man. This is why I say. I used to go to those awards before I fucking, you know, act like a fucking animal hitting on people and shit. I used to go to what this was the fucking best times of my life. You yeah. know, when seeing all your friends and stuff. Yeah. Hanging out with your friends. Good part. No, it feels like... Oh, fact, great part is going back with your friends. No, well, it feels all like a reunion. work and stuff and we all know each other. It's it feels awesome. like a reunion. Yeah, yeah. Don't you think in the NFL the players need to fucking start standing up for themselves and that's the only way they're going to have any kind of shift you know in uh, power they're making Kaepernick the example um it's almost like me too i would never tell a woman that you have to go public like you don't pressure people into like now nah, look tell your story yeah, yeah uh stand out like like even when even when people uh, during this whole thing i didn't go at any actors in hollywood for not doing or whatever i understand what the controversy is they're like okay it's disrespectful to, to kneel during the national anthem or whatever because it's it's they feel like it's disrespectful i don't agree but but this is the point that's the point everybody's making but why are you selling beer during the national anthem why are the concessions still open during the national anthem why can i go walk over and buy a flag and go buy a t-shirt during the national anthem all employees of the NFL have to stop and stand during the national anthem. I had a lawyer tell me, he was like, damn, I never thought about it like that. That's like having a building where only the second floor has to stand for the national anthem and everybody else can continue working. Not right, dude. Because what happens is you look like you're just pinpointing these guys. And every, let me tell you, they want to play. They want to play the game. Ain't nothing wrong with the game. Nothing wrong with football. It's, but all the attitudes that come around it, it's garbage, man. Garbage. Yeah. yeah. I was acting like I was on drugs, never getting high. I was drinking, though. But the shit I was doing is stupid. Some motherfuckers looking at me weird. What the fuck happened? You got to know. I remember, Mike. Yeah. I remember. I didn't I didn't go up to you, but I, this is back in 91. I was a rookie. Wow. Rookie in the Rams. Yeah. He was here. He was like, I, I remember the, the Light, club huh? was. Uh, Ty Light. You played with Ty Light? Yeah, I played with Ty. Yeah, I was, yes. I when it came to yes. Ty Light. At the Palladium. Yeah. You came, but you came to. Practice. I remember you yeah. came to Ram Park, the whole yeah. thing. Everybody was flipping. I was in awe. I was in awe. That's I so was cool, like, That's man. Mike Tyson. Hell yeah. You see, but you got to understand. I mean, literally, you were the, ex I mean, still are the example of what manhood is. It's really tough to, you know, have a family, too. You, know? you got to be um, able to last, man. Be a fucking you know, it's all about father lasting. and a husband. And I mean, do be in a relationship with people, man. Yeah. There are probably 10 guys I played with, I'm 50, all died before 45. 10. Hey, I played with Junior Seau, man. One of the best um, yeah, linebackers to ever do it. And he Hall was, of fame. He, it, dude, it, it's depressing. It's heartbreaking. And the league has not acknowledged that these guys need help. Because the thing is, they, they need you slightly messed up. Yeah. They need like, you needing them. Yeah, yeah. Like, you can't be all together. You can be a quarterback. And be all together. But everybody else, to play with that kind of pain, you got to be damaged. Yeah. Coming out of it, I th you know, looking back as a rookie, everything is about protect the shield. You're privileged to be here. You know, uh, this is about us. Yep. You know, anytime you do anything, we're going to turn your back, turn our back on you. Yeah. You know. And but think about this. They've been using you since college. Yeah. Wait, yeah. if you got an NCAA scholarship, You've been you've been extorted all the way, you dude. That's exploitation. Yeah. How in the world are these cats gonna make billions of dollars off this free? These cats are playing for free, Mike. For free. Yeah, f free labor. It's free labor. How about some health insurance? Can we dude, get lifetime health insurance? All you gotta do, just imagine if they give if they gave these guys twenty five thousand a year and told them if they graduate you get a hundred grand at the end, yeah. so you could start your life. That's that's all doable. Oh yeah, that's way doable. So doable. But it's no. a fourteen billion dollar industry. Listen, man, you know what they told me? I I quit. I had to go. I got drafted in the NFL in the eleventh round by the Rams. Wow. They told me, and I, I said, and I had twelve credits left. I only had twelve. I still don't have for a degree. college. For college, I still. They, you know what they told me? They said, "Hey, man, you got you got to you got to come back and pay. You got to pay to, to go back." I was like, "Y'all can't just." Health insurance? No. Yeah. Hey, man, you blow your knee out in college, your knee's still blown out. Oh, yeah, you're fucked. I mean, you're, yeah. So, Terry, I mean. tell me this. Um, when it was all over, when football was over, when everything was over, and it was just boom, 
everything's all that shit's away. Did you say, what the fuck am I going to do? I was depressed. What did you do? How did, Mike, you, how did it work? You I know what? Know, and that's happened in Baku. What the fuck happened? Let me tell you what happened. Where's my money? Where's my friends? Where's my shit? Oh, I was alone. First of all, first of all, I had, I, man, look, I was sitting in, I remember my wife and I moved. It's a, uh, it's a really bad feeling, man. Bruh. Where everybody went. I gained oh, shit. 30 pounds. I gained 30 pounds. You're very pounds. vulnerable. <laughs> yeah, oh, vulnerable. You are like a baby. You know, like, like, uh, like, when you got your prime, you, you, no you, can't get a, you can't get a mile close to me. Now mm. nobody's around. So I just walk up and smack the shit out of you. Or something. I wasn't no nowhere on your skill. <laughs> like, no, I wasn't like this. So yeah, I, no. I mean, nobody uh, even knew me. You know, by that time, you know, if you got the helmet on, nobody know, yeah. even know you look like. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? But, th- I mean, I was nowhere on that level. But, but I was hurt. When I say, because you know what, it was my wife and my family, and I was like, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. Like, I got nothing. And I sat there, gained 30 pounds. I was eating burgers and pecan sandies and sitting there at two in the morning, sitting there just can't even sleep. And then all of a sudden, it was like, my wife kept telling me, she said, babe, you need a job. I was like, I don't, uh-uh, you know who I am? Because I'm trying to keep a little bit of pride. Uh, and right. pride is, uh, you're yeah. just trying to keep some sort of like, I I am somebody, yeah. but they was like, nope. I'm gonna take a job as a waiter. Like, uh, fuck Mike, no, Mike, Mike. That's I, I yeah, I know. I was just thinking when I my first job in L.A. was a place called it was at a place called Labor Ready, and I went in, and what it is is you, because I had nothing. Listen, we were digging in the couch for quarters, Mike. We digged in the couch for quarters, so I could get gas. I had nothing. My wife was like, are you ready? I was like, I got to do something. Labor Ready was this place you could show up five in the morning. You work with uh, drug addicts, ex-cons, homeless, and they give you a job for eight hours. You get a check at the end of the day. They sent me to a factory. I was sweeping floors all day for eight hours. And you got I got $8 an hour. And I was so I was hurt, like, oh my God, I can't believe it. I thought I was gonna die. I thought literally, like, pick sweeping the floor, I thought I was gonna fall over and die. But you know what, Mike? This was magic. This was magic, magic. Man, I'm sweeping. I'm like, whoa, I'm actually doing something about my situation. Listen to me, man. Let me tell you, it's I reframed it, because all of a sudden, before I was talking, I was rapping. And now I'm doing. Because I was talking shit. But doing shit makes things change. So I started sweeping. And look, I got to the end of the day. And I went and got my check. And Mike, they gave me a check for $64. I could cash it right there. $64. They took the taxes out. They gave me $48. I took that 20 I took 20 of that 48 gave it to my wife, put $20 in the gas tank. I had $8 that I didn't have yesterday, Mike. I never was broke again. I worked my ass off ever since then, and I didn't die. I thought I was going to die. Because like you said, what am I going to do? I'll be a waiter? Fuck that. Yup. Yeah. Then, yeah. and then you know what I found out? Nobody gave a damn, Mike. No, you think people are looking at you? You think yeah. nobody is? Yeah. That's not ego. Yeah. That's not ego. Oh. That's not ego. Oh. You think that's even me? I'm Mike Tyson. I mean, at oh. this fucking place, people yeah. are laughing. People don't hey, give man. a fuck. Nobody, nobody everybody think about their bills. Yeah. Yeah. They yeah. thinking about yeah. themselves. Yeah. Dude, that was the test. I passed. Fuck, I passed. Man. I worked. And I, then I was filing papers in the Veterans Administration. Then I was doing security. I had three jobs at the same time, Mike, because I realized people did not care. And let me tell you something. I never stopped working to this day. I got three jobs now. And I'm still doing it. Uh, Love that. But it's the same mentality. Hey, I hey, can let's, change let's that. Let's go somewhere. Let's take this to another because of the success, this um, man, this rapid success, you mean, do you think people that have been, um, you know, especially some people that was on YouTube, um, saying the things they've been saying, maybe you think because of that, there's some jealousy there? Oh, definitely. I mean, I'm not being honest. Oh, it, it, people, real. yeah, yeah. Oh, man, first of all, jealousy is common to man. You know what I mean? Because I have, you know what? I have people saying I am being paid by white supremacists. <laughs> this was crazy. Uh, oh, see, Terry Crews got his balls felt on, and he let the white boy do it so that he could get America's Got Talent. <laughs> I'm sitting there like, okay. So forget you orchestrated the fact- that. Oh, my God. They, they, they said I orchestrated the whole thing, and uh, William Morris had this whole plan. This is you, When you talk about people who believe conspiracy theories, there's no end. 
Yeah. And so they got it all like worked out. Like Terry Crews, see he did that. See, and then you can hear them. They they go, yeah. Well, I I, I could never do Old Spice. So because you know that, that's not me. Because I'm too much of a. I'm like, no, look. Just because nobody been calling you. And nobody doing anything. Because look at, first of all, look at the people you were in there with. You Steve Harvey blown up. Listen, nigga, yeah. check it out, Evan. You I, see? I know when those calls stopped coming, Evan. I used to have all the I had the Mike Tyson punch. I had all this stuff, Evan. The commercial had, man, man, big, big um, all, um, uh, operations with my commercials with Pepsi Cola. Then those calls stopped coming. You start, I'm the kind of, I'll take their money and I won't show up. You know, oh, man. Wish I never did that. Wow. And that, and that's now, what happened with DMX. Remember yeah, he, that? yeah, you know that's what happened. He was going to be a movie star. Yeah, he, was, yeah. he would show up at a movie set six hours late. People was like, "Wait, you got to understand how movies work." Yeah, like, um, hey man, listen, you, like, what are you doing? I don't, listen, what I don't know doing? about you, but Ooh. check this out. I remember when you could be on the movie set and then you could take a break. Lunchtime, you leave the set. Boom. Next thing you know, you get high, you never come back. Dude. <laughs> you get high, you don't come back to the set. That's why you can't leave the set now, right? Right. They don't let you leave. No. They have all the food. They and bring everything there. there. Yeah. They, bring, they know yeah, they coming they, back. I remember when you could leave the set. Man, oh. we leave the set. We ain't coming back. Listen, we ain't coming back. Mike. No way. Let me t- all my business has been repeat business, though. Because they say Terry Crews going to work his ass off. Oh, man, that's beautiful to hear yeah, that. I, I don't play, man. I don't play. I show up early. I'm never late. I'm always ready. I'm always prepared. I know my lines. I know my thing. I study. Because I, I took all. Because this, this is the thing, man. I had to realize, man, this is my business. It ain't your business. See, that's the problem. People, this is people, hard shit. Hey, man, wait, wait. If you're working at a, at a, a, a whatever, a burger place, people be like, man, yeah, this is your burger place. Whatever. I show up. Whatever. Listen, when you realize this is your place, everything you're doing is you, I, so I, said, I said, listen, man, no matter what I'm doing, it's still the Terry Crews business. If I was flipping burgers, I got to make sure those burgers are well done. You know what I'm saying? And they're done to your specification. If I sweep them floors, them floors got to be clean. Because d- learning that means I can do anything at that level. You got to learn down there, though. And, dude, that changed my mindset, man. Changed everything, man. I was like, I remember when they invited, listen, when they invited us to do Lip Sync Battle, they was like, well, you ain't going to get no money. We're going to donate it and the whole thing. And I knew they was just starting out. I said, listen, man, for LL, for, for Mike, for, for, for the people that I believed in that are doing this show, I got to give you the best. I didn't hold back nothing. You understand what I mean? Yes, but you I know do. what happens? You get props. All of a sudden, people go, my God, I love Terry Crews. I love what he does. And then all of a sudden, the next job keeps coming. And the next job paying. And see, and I, that's how I make my money, man. And just always, always giving people more than they expect. I learned this a long time ago. I had to fight with it. And I realized it after that one thing when I was broke. And I realized, wait a minute, man. The only way to break to, to break this is change my attitude. I had to change. You know what? Some of us have to understand. It's just from my experience, you know. And I see some, you know, brothers out there. We have to understand when we get a job. This is their gig. This is not our show. Yes. This is their running the show. We're not running. I used to come in. This is my motherfucker. He ain't gonna tell me this is his wow. fucking show, Mike. Shut the fuck up and do what he tells you to do. He's paying wow. you to do this shit, Mike. Wow. Wow. The fuck you mean you go this your set you have run this no motherfucker shut the fuck up wow. and just read the lines motherfucker that's what you're getting paid for read the fucking lines uh, listen I don't want to be straight I want to be real real clear man uh, Mike I love you man um, that, that's I just don't, me that's the kind of motherfucker no, I was listen, listen fuck you you know what I mean I, man first of all I, I understand it I understand it and I understand why people mad at me. I understand. I'm not mad at any black man or any. I understand it because I was just like that. Yeah. But I'm here to say, I'm here to say that I'm on the other side. It's like when you see the whole picture, you know what I mean? You go, oh, my God. It's like it's like once you get the aerial view, you go, oh, damn. You know what I mean? I've been in this view that's been down here for the longest, so it all looks dark. But when you get the aerial, you go, oh, I see. This is not the way I thought it was. This is not. There are certain things that just don't work. And I ain't mad. I ain't mad at DL. I ain't mad at Tariq. I, I, but I do like the fact that we're having these conversations now. You know, we having conversations that we should have had a long time ago. And the problem is a lot of times is that white people watching. And that's what gets people mad. Because I tried to close the door. I tried to be like, hey, man, look, let's talk this out. But the thing is, you want to blow, blow, blow me up, you went and made a, went a press conference and opened the door, so now look, yeah, everybody watch it. You know what I mean? But I love my people, man. 
I love my people. I love my community enough to say something about it, and I'm never leaving. And you know what? They, they see me dance. They see, oh, he's a happy Negro. He cooning. But you know what the thing is? Is you can't get rid of my joy. I'm, I, I know where I could be. I'm from Flint, Michigan. I could be dead. Ooh, I could be in jail. Out. I could be strung out on dope. Let me tell you, I know. I've seen it. And let me tell you, every day I go back to my big house and I drive that big car and I look at my beautiful wife and I look at them kids and make you dance. It make you go, oh, my God, I didn't lose it. Dude, it makes you happy. I will never, ever lose my happiness, ever. Nobody can take it from me. I'm sorry. I'm preaching right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Preach, brother. <laughs> Good talk, man. Preach, talk, man. I love y'all, man. This is we got deep. We got deep. Real oh, deep. Oh, it's gonna dude. be on the press. It's gonna be Real I can't wait deep. to see my Twitter after this. <laughs> you just really have everybody has to forgive, man. And, and, and you know what? Again, that word keeps coming up. People are like, fuck that. I ain't forgiving nothing. I ain't forgiving, forgiving. But that does not It's the mean. way out, right? No, but For most most of us are enslaved in that path. Yes. That's who we are, all of us. Black, You're gonna white, candy, stay. A path enslaves us. Until you forgive, you stay stuck. There's no way you can get out. As If I'm continually mad at somebody, I'm stuck. But you got to understand that being feeling mad, being mad feels good. It does. That's why people want to feel bad. It does. <laughs> it you know, good. Well, you two, things feel, it two things yeah. feel amazing. Anger and pity. They both feel really, really good. They're like drugs. Oh, my God, man. Just, All like, the pity in like the world like drugs, feels good. it eats you up at the end. It does. Like Dude, drugs just that, fucks you, you up. You know what? Yeah. Think about this. The, most angry, the, the angriest, most pity, pity-filled pity people, those are the guys that do the mass shootings. Yeah. That When you reach a level of anger and pity that, that culminates... It usually ends up with somebody shooting yeah. in the crowd. And if they don't have the nerve to do that kind of stuff, they just die miserably. Oh, of some right. disease or something. Right. It's just, it it eats you up from die. the inside. Or they die, they overeat and die overweight. It's just really crazy. I believe it. I believe it. I'm a, can I ask you a question, sure, Mike? Sure, why not? You know, I'm, I'm looking at all this. What do you think? Because right now, legalized gambling is about to happen in most sports. What do you think? I mean, looking at how gambling has affected boxing and you know, you turn around and you're like, did they really win? I mean, what is your take on gambling and sports, man? I think this is something um, that's been going on since the beginning of time, since Roman times, since they have anything. They, 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 they've been on fucking road racing. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's the, um, that's, that's the core of human beings, gambling, taking risks and stuff like that. And um, it's going to happen. Yeah. You know, this is something that's going to happen <sighs> because it's profitable as hell. But do you think it's it could sully, like you no, know what I mean? Listen, know why it's going to be so successful? Because teams like Nevada are getting perfect. I mean, places like Nevada are getting professional teams now. Oh yeah, right, right. So now that's going to be off the hook. Now that's the problem right there. Now what are they going to do now? Vegas got a professional um, team. Now what are they going to do? I'm just thinking you about it being gamble. tampered. You, oh, you know what I mean? Like you all you got to do is get the one person. You don't though. think yeah. so? Please. You know what good. I mean? Hey, baseball had its scandal, the eight man out scandal. Yeah, 1919. I mean, come on. Black Sox. It just makes me worry, man. Like I'm like the NFL is so tied in because you know the owners got a piece of the FanDuel, they got yeah. a piece of DraftKings. Yeah. Man, Sketchy. Means, hey, man. Look, 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 Are look, the players look. getting any of that? Hey, hey, no. Absolutely None. not. None. And look at the phantom call that happened that put the Rams in the Super Bowl. Do you have what kind yeah. of idea that the crime rate's, what the crime rate's going to be like once the team comes there? Ooh. In Vegas? Oh, come on. Ooh. Crime the Raiders in Vegas. With all <laughs> these. With all all. It's going to be insane. Toxic. Evan. You know what? With you Gruden, make a, dude. First with of all, Gruden. you start to make a bar and call it toxic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're and ready, they will be like, yeah! yeah. I'm watching when I was living oh. there. I'm watching them build a stadium right in the middle of the goddamn freeway. Yeah, oh, it's that's gonna, gonna be nuts, homie. I don't know. I don't know if I want to be around. Yeah. I might move. Fuck I that. <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Tough, I might man. move. That's crazy. That's too much. But wait, dude. but think about the you, what's your call, what's your take on the call that put the Rams in that the Saints. <sighs> Dude, that was a straight up passing appearance. I was just man. watching it. I was like, I, I was like, nobody threw a flag there. What? I couldn't With all believe that video? It. I was like watching. I'm like, where's the flag? Hey, man. First of all, they got NFL has a huge stadium coming up in LA. They have a vested interest. It's the second biggest market in America, or if not the world. They wanted LA. 
Come on. Listen. I, listen. I wouldn't doubt it. Oh, I did. I wouldn't doubt but it. But there's a question now. Yeah, well. With Kaepernick still sitting out. It's all. They, they know you can collude. They do it. Yeah. Hey, man. First of all, all the competition is an illusion. It's all owned by the same company. Yeah. Yeah. That's the deal. Like, like if they had another league that was bad. Well, what do you think about these other leagues? The, I think Double it's X, great, what, what but what they try Vince to do to choke them out. They try NFL what about Vince chokes McMahon? them out. Vince McMahon. What about yeah, him? Vince they McMahon. choked them out though. They choke. Yeah. They, they try to bring it back, right? They're trying to. Man, they choked him out the first time. <laughs> no, you can I'm be done. a coach. I'm done. I'm done. I, 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 that world. Fuck that. Oh, yeah. I'm so glad I'm, I'm over out. it. Man. I made it out. That's how you know yeah. boxing. I'm glad you made it out of that shit. Not talking funny and shit. <laughs> yeah, dude. Listen, oh, I got man. knocked out on Monday Night Football, man. Oh. I hit a guy so hard, I knocked myself out. Oh. Bro, first of all, it's the best feeling in the world. Yeah. I, I never yeah. been high in my life, but I was yeah. like, wow. This is yeah. amazing. And I, we were playing the Indianapolis Colts, and I looked over there, and they had a, I said, what's the you mean? What is the you? <laughs> and they was like, dude, what are you talking about? I said, are we in Utica? And, man, they was like, punt team. And I was like, I'm on the punt team. But what's a punt? What's a punt, man? Oh, you took and then I started crying. Out. Wait, Mike, I started crying because I knew I was going to lose my job. I said, okay, I know I'm on the punt team, but I don't know what a punt is, and they're going to fire me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bro. It was hilarious at the time. Yeah. But I look Looking back, man. Back. Oh, dude, I I'm like, man. And that back then, you just got ding. Yeah. But dude, I I don't, I don't know what to tell Even you. Even when I played, I never reported a concussion. Never. I was like, That's I just got ding, dude. You, you say that. You say I'm hurt, cause they're like, yeah. oh, okay. You're well, you fucked. cut too. See ya. You hey, cut hey, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Terry, Terry, check it out. You really popular now. And you all these shows and all these. Uh, what the fuck you doing driving alone? Why are you hanging out by yourself? Oh, dude, I, I I don't have a circle. I don't have a team. No. Did, nobody, also, nobody knows where I'm going either. You gotta be careful. So you see, I just, I just show up. You gotta be careful. You see what I mean? No, there. I know. Fools but look, Mike, there. Mike, there's only look. I, nobody knows where I'm going. I don't make no announcements. I'm like, hey, oh, hey, that's Terry Crews. I'm in Ralph's. They're like, damn it, that's Terry Crews. <laughs> hey, man, there's some dudes. Like, hey, man, why ain't you got no security? I looked at. I said, oh, do I need one? <laughs> <laughs> are you going by? Are you doing something to me right now? <laughs> yeah, hell no. See, I sneak up on their ass. I, I literally grab my cookies and I'm in the checkout line. They're like, "Hey, yeah. hey, you, it's and I'm Terry, like, I gotta go." <laughs> I always laugh because Mike has a bodyguard. No, why? I, I just need them for um witnessing. crowd control. No, just for witnessing what happens. It's good. Oh, well, okay. well no, wait. First, if everybody they can't stop somebody fighting me because they're like, you know, Mike. Can't do them. But I'm gonna say it's for witnesses. It's take no, if everybody police, knew this is what happened. If everybody <laughs> knew where I was, I would, yeah. I would, I have bodyguard. Yeah, like especially if if I'm doing a, a talk or going somewhere, I have a security. Mm. Like if everybody Terry Crews here today. Now we gotta have yeah. police or security. Yeah. Because like if, I, if I'm out shopping, if I'm in the, I'm gonna play shopping, right? I'm on Fifth Avenue. Next thing you know, the whole avenue is crowded. People trying to get me. We have to lock the door, and oh, I'm yeah. by myself. Yeah. So I gotta call somebody. Oh, so cop gotta come, and it's just crazy. Mike, you were one of the most famous yeah. people. Mike can't go anywhere. Wait, first of all, there are people who. There are very few people who have ever reached your level of fame, and, I, and I'm talking biblical status. That's like Moses. Mike Tyson, uh, listen, man. Michael Jordan, <laughs> you know what I mean? Gandhi, yeah, you know what no, I mean? Mike listen, Tyson, yeah, yeah it's, it's all, crazy, it's man. Like, but Abbott, oh. when you look at it now, the the way that um that they promote uh, they promote and the way that um, technology works now, you can get that famous in one hour, or ten minutes. Just goes all, information just goes around yeah. the world so fast. No, but yeah. but but it's also cotton candy. People yeah. forget that quick too. Yeah, yeah. But you. Established. It's, it's never like I said. When I say that that level, it's like man, dude. You, you go to remote parts of Africa, they're like Mike Tyson, <laughs> Mike Tyson. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They, awesome. they look at me like uh, yeah. white chicks. <laughs> they, they don't. They don't know my name. They'll be like, oh, the guy from White Chicks. But you, they're so, like Mike Tyson. Some of these places you go are real scary. And I went to Bul Bulgaria. You went to what was that place in uh, Algeria? God, Ooh, man, what scary happened? place. It's just um. The strongest man rules. It's not about no cop, but the strongest man rules. Ooh, and they that's got toxic, their gang, toxic. And they got their toxic. gang. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, man, look, I did when I did Expendables in Bulgaria. Yeah, it's a trip, right? Hey, man. I, would, I wouldn't. The strongest crew rules. Hey, I wouldn't hang out in the lobby. No, it was billionaires, hookers, 
sketchy. You, I didn't even. I didn't. Even, people, the gangsters, man. No gangsters. They're, they're, the they're gangsters. people who kill people. Everybody the with gangsters. black leather jackets walking around, and they were like, "Hey, hey, uh, Coos, come here." And I'm like, "Oh, I, I like I couldn't hear." I gotta go. And I get in the elevator, man. I would go in the elevator, go up, because I don't even want to talk to you. You know, like, come here, come here. Hey, let me yeah. talk to you. Let, they got let me talk to you. They I'm they like, could ah. do anything. They could do anything in that man, country. Man, you will disappear. You will disappear. That's why I'm telling you, talking to me about that. Bulgaria. You know what I'm talking about, dude. We you. There was people that was there one day and wasn't there the next. And you're like, man. Just be nice to people. (laughs) (laughs) It was like 15 Tony Sopranos all sitting down in the lobby. So intense. Good God. Danger. Hey, man, we got it good in America. You know what I mean? We do. We do. You go to other countries, man. It's crazy. You go to other countries. When they they go to our jail over here, it's like the fucking Holiday Inn. Yeah. Our prisons here, like the Holiday Inn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they like, man, y'all got a nice prison. Love it. (laughs) Love it. Don't want to leave it. They don't want to come out. Stay in there. Okay. How did you guys meet? How? How did we meet? You know what? We Again... We all, I always remember, bumped into remember you. We did, remember we did that stuff with the whinings too? Yes. We remember did the whinings. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did, we we did, did a uh, BB right? Wine and yeah, did a video did. with Hammer. It yeah. was MC Hammer. It was, was him. Sweet. And it was a song. And that was one of the first times I actually, see, because I met Mike, but Mike didn't remember me. I had high top fade. And, <laughs> and, 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 and Mike was in his glory. You know what I mean? I was waving from this thing like, Mike. Yeah, yeah. I met Prince the same night. Yeah. Uh, and it was wild because it was Prince, you, Prince, Queen Latifah, Wesley Snipes was all down there. I mean, this was at the height, man. This was crazy. And I was just, a, I remember walking around with my high top fade. I had on overalls and I You're was like, oh my God. First rookie year. Wow. So then later. Did you play with Eric Dixon? Yeah, I know. I played after him. After him. It was back when, uh, you know, I played with Daryl Henley, all them cats. And he got caught up with drugs and 40 Yo, years. Big time. Big time. time 40 big time. years. Is it all the papers and everything? Oh I remember God. that. You remember but, that? Yeah, it's and crazy. I was young Stop. Too. Listen, so that that it's funny because now that I I've, I've reached a level of fame, which is crazy, I remember meeting Prince after I started doing Everybody Hates Chris. And I was actually invited to his house. It was after the Golden Globes. And I couldn't believe it. He was like, I enjoy your show. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, Prince. Prince, and see, and then when you come up to Mike and Mike knows you, and Mike says, "Tell you, hey T, come here," and then you go, "Man, look, hey man, I'm getting, I'm, I'm actually getting emotional right now because, you no, know, I just remember looking out my window in Flint and just wanting to be something. Like, can I just do something? Like, I, I got to get out of here. Oh, man, I, I just want to make a difference, man. I, I just want to do something." You know what I mean? Like, I used to watch people. I said, man, can I just, I don't want to get trapped here. Because uh, that was the point. It was isn't like, it crazy how, listen, how um, you visualize that shit and, it's, and it finds Ooh. you and it takes Ooh. you. And you're like, whoa, where am I going? Where am I going? Yeah, what the fuck? What happened? How did I get here? Yes! How come all these people, you know, but you forget you put in the work. That's it. And the work is magic. It's, it's, that's how I feel all the, the time. work is magic. To have people that you admire and love, and they like, man, Terry, come here. And you're like, Ter-. like you know me. Listen, you know who came up, and I'm gonna tell you, man. Henry Winkler came up to me at the Golden Globe. Fine. I can't wait to work with you one day, dude. Come on, man. That's awesome. That's dude. the fine, man. <laughs> hey, man. Respect like you. I said, dude, you get weepy. You get like, no, this is people. These are people I watched as a kid, and I watched probably every episode of Happy Days four or five times in a row, four or five every day. You just sit there and you like. My God, he knows me. Hey, man. It's just crazy being at those, like we were talking about earlier, those award shows and all those celebrities and just having to pinch yourself. It's unreal. But then you also also see this is the thing that's tripping me out, especially now, is that you start to see that all these people ain't good people. You know I what I mean? want to see you do good and shine. Oh, dude. I mean, when I look at, when I look at even with Cosby, I mean, I looked up to him, man. And I was like, damn it. I mean, I grew up on Fat Albert, grew up on Lil Bill, grew up on all this stuff, man. And I'm going, man, I watched the Cosby show. That was my example of, of what a, fat, a black father would look like, man. And I was like, come on, man. And then you start to realize, listen, man, I don't care about the image no more. I don't care. Now you got to be good people. Like, before it was good enough. It was good enough for me that you was a great person, image. of. But now I want to see that as a real person. You know what I mean? I don't want to see no fakeness. 
I don't want to see no fakeness. I, I don't. I'm not around fake people. I don't want to be fake. I'm not fake, cause I used to be. I used to be two people. I used to be faking like, hey, I'm good, and then go home and be another person. And I realized, like somebody told me one time, they said, hey man, is it hard to keep up your image? I was like, man, you can't have an image, dude. You just gotta be you. You just gotta be you. Mike, one thing I love about you right now, you are you, dog. Like, you see, what you see is what you get. That's what I love. And when I look at, but you can see other things where you're like, man, some dude is playing, he's gaming everybody. And I've seen that. And you hear people, and when they really talk it, it's like, it's, you know, it's like, it's like having somebody go, ah, yeah, I love everyone. And then you hear them say, yeah, that nigga. You go, whoa, whoa, what was that? Listen, if you're a friend of everybody, you're an enemy to yourself. You see, dude, yes. Yes. So I'm, I'm we, man, I'm glad we got real. I needed this. This is therapy. This it is. is th- this, you know what? First of all, this is all therapy. This is all real yeah. therapy. Talking through this stuff. Yeah. Sorting it out. Asking questions. Hey, man, people can get mad at me for any comment, but we're going to talk about it. Yeah. If everybody stops talking about it because they're too scared to get yeah. a tweet, I don't care. We're fucked, man. We, yes. We got to talk about if it. If we don't ask it? questions, we finish. Communicate. Just fucking get it out there. Why not? Yeah. And that's the only way we can start sorting stuff out, man. I appreciate it. That's why I, I, I appreciate this, Mike. Thank, Thank you for well. coming, man, Terry. We're so happy you came, though. Yeah, man. man. It was just beautiful, man. You oh, got man. your show, Brooklyn Nine Nine. Yeah. What else you got going on? I'm hosting uh, America's Got Talent. America's Got Talent. Uh, the Champions. I'm, I have a spin off. Oh, yeah, yeah. And uh, Simon, Heidi, Mel, Howie, the whole it's thing. Awesome, man. I'm doing that. You know, there's people out here that, you know, this may be people say, you out here, buck down, you're doing these, get the job. But there's people out here that say, fuck, you got to listen. That's so awesome. Like us, said, we're impressed with that. Hey, man. You know how hard it is for a brother to get some jobs? First of all, when you. You know how hard that listen. is? Listen, I have, I have, I have. 30... I don't care how much dancing you do to get some job and to be qualified to have the job. I don't care. You, you, ain't, you can't do that too much dancing, enough Mike, dancing. Mike, I just think that too. You ain't doing enough dancing. For but that Mike, job. I've been dancing for black people. Yeah. See, that was the thing. I danced for black people first. And let me tell you this: I've and to sit in front, to stand in front of thirty to forty million people every week, and wait, and they, and the problem is they love you. <laughs> and, that, and and people get mad when they like you. They're like, oh, uh, you, you, what did, what, how do they like you? And I'm like, man, I am just me. And I got two shows on NBC. Bruh, it, you don't get bigger than NBC. I've got hundreds, hundreds of hours of television. Everybody Hates Chris, uh, uh, Brooklyn Nine-Nine, White Ch- all the movies I've done, the whole career, man, it just gets bigger and better. And dude, I, I am forever grateful, forever grateful. Like I said, you can't steal my joy, man. That dancing, awesome, brother. That dancing happened in Flint back in the day. You it's know what I awesome. mean? awesome. No problem. It's so powerful, <laughs> dude. Fuck. It's well, good. you'll have to come back, man, because I feel like I could talk to you for hours. I know. This is good. We I could just stay in here, man. See, we, but we all been through it. That's yeah. in my situation. Yeah. I always carry the weight of a fool by myself, but even though other people contribute, you know what I mean? Always carry the weight, but even though you say you let these people steal your fucking happiness, can't let them do that. No. Never. See, oh, okay. I, I, you know what? There's nothing else to say to that. I'm, so, I'm literally like, that That right? You cannot let people steal your yeah, happiness. Yeah, so easy up. to happen. You're just getting a tweet. Somebody say, hey, you fucking dancing, buck nigga, dancing, Uncle Tom. Or oh, they nigga. say the foulest. That could, that could fuck somebody's happiness up. If they don't know how to take it, they can internalize it and fuck themselves up. But you know, I, I know how to take it, though. I've been very, very patient because I, I understand. A lot of you times have to, they that's mad. painful. It's they, painful stuff. But they mad. They, you know what? Again, it's say jealousy. that it's painful stuff. It is painful. See, I know that because I've said nasty things to people, and people said nasty things, and I thought that's the way life should be. And then when I found out about forgiveness and happiness and accepting who you are, you know what I mean, and forgiving yourself, I learned all that shit, and I thought that was all bullshit at first, cliché. And you learn to love yourself, and you said, you know, you feel, I'm sorry I said those things. You found out <sighs> Nasty those things were, Woo. you know, and it's never ended. Like nah. that, that stuff gets done, gets started. It's like a toilet. It's about growing up, you know. It's hard to grow up. People gotta be, keep staying drama, unless they're not irrelevant. If they're not in drama, they're not irrelevant. Wow. Gotta be drama. Can't be anything intellectual. Can't be anything soulful. Gotta be drama. Without drama, they're nothing. They don't exist. 
I feel so blessed, Terry. I get to hear Mike talk like this all the time, dude. It's crazy. It's crazy. Man, I'm about to go out here and do something special right now. Yeah, <laughs> hell yeah, brother. Like, I'm going to go hand out some flowers to people right yeah, now. Yeah, hell yeah. I'm, you know, I'm You're trying to tell you. inspired. It's life. It's yes. good, man. This is the toughest man in the world. Yeah. Wait, you are talking to the... <laughs> nah, but listen, man. I know how hard it is to be out there, <clears throat> to be black man, the big man, the pr- the, you know, the queen. He's a target. The, the target, the big buck kind of guy out there. And to get a job, man, you know, because they're afraid of you. You know, you got this stereotype on you. Yep. Great episode, Mike. Mm-hmm. Thank you, Terry. You're take, the man, dude. Take us out, Evan. Really take us out. This is beautiful. Well, Thanks until for next time, me. everybody, I'm Evan Britton. That's Mike Tyson. Terry Cruz. Awesome. Thank you, Terry. And we'll see you guys next time. Peace. See ya. Peace.